Let's talk about rational functions and specifically about a point of discontinuity. Now a point of discontinuity is sometimes called a removable discontinuity because you can fill the empty point of that hole and essentially remove that discontinuity. Let's take a look at example one and I guess this is not it an easy example, but uh, illustrates the concept of a point of discontinuity. So we have a graph of a function f of x, and it equals this rational function is x squared plus bx plus c in the numerator and x minus d in the denominator. Now it says that it appears as a straight line. It says is a straight line, but I just added it appears as a straight line with a point of discontinuity of 2, 5. Again, an ordered pair, so this is an x value and this is a y value we need to determine the value of c. So how should we approach this problem? Well, remember that this ordered pair 2, 5 is a point of discontinuity, which means that the x value of 2 must cause the discontinuity. And you may ask, well, how, many, how can we do that? Well, there are two ways generally that we know of that creates discontinuities. The first one is that you cannot divide by 0. And the second one is that you cannot take the square root of a negative. So uh, if we're to say, okay, well, these are the rules, right? You cannot divide by zero. That divide by zero is a no-no. And you cannot take the square root of a negative. So that is, can't do this and you can't do that. Okay, fair enough. So we must conclude then that when you have this denominator of x minus d, that the value of 2 creates a discontinuity. Well, how does that happen? Well, if we take a look at this value of x uh, minus d on in the denominator, the value of 2 must create a discontinuity, which means that it must end up being 0 on the in the denominator. So let's see. If we use x minus 2 as the denominator, then using x equaling 2 would get 2 minus 2, and that would create the 0 that is not allowed in the bottom, which creates that discontinuity. All right, so that means then that f of x is going to be equal to this x squared, we'll just copy the numerator down, x squared plus bx plus c, and then over top of, now we can say confidently that it's x minus 2, because x being 2, the value of 2 of the point of discontinuity creates a discontinuity here we can see it's dividing by zero. All right, so remember that it says that this appears as a straight line. So you may ask, how does something that has a quadratic in the numerator create a straight line? Well, remember from previous examples of using points of discontinuity is that when you have a quadratic, uh, let's say if we add x plus one, um, x minus, say two, and that's over something like x minus 2, then yes, you have a discontinuity when the value is of x is 2. However, everywhere else, like say x being 3 or 4 or 5, then you would have 3 minus 2, which is 1, over 3 minus 2, which is 1. And so every other case, when x is not equal to 2, you'll be able to cancel out these uh, two brackets. There would be one in the numerator and a partner in the denominator. In fact, then, that's how this rational function actually looks like x plus 1 everywhere except exactly where x equals 2. Except, oops, except when x equals 2. And in fact, we can say that when we see this, it's going to be a point of discontinuity because this is the only place and it's just a hole and it has this partner um, cancellation here. So uh, if we have this point of discontinuity of 2, 5, then that means there must have been a partner on the top that actually cancels out this x minus 2 in the denominator. So how does this x squared plus bx plus c have an x minus 2 in it? Well, that means that it must have been a multiplication of two binomials. So we have x minus two because it has to have a partner that cancels. And then there must be some other factor. Um, we have x minus, say some, what, what we use? Not B, C, D, F. Uh, let's just say that it's G. We'll use uh, x minus G.
Okay, so that means that everywhere except x equals 2, we're going to be able to cancel this. So let's take a look at this. Actually, let's take a look at the function. Just visually, there's, it's going to look like a straight line except for one little spot where there's a hole in it. Okay. Now remember though, the value, the height value of that, that hole is really just that particular point. So here in this case, it's 2, 5. So the y value at that hole, even though there's no function value there, um, that hole, the height value for the hole is going to be 5 for a y value and x will equal 2. So let's let's do that. When x is not equal to 2, it's going to simplify like this. But we can, so in a way we can say this is f of x is equal to this x minus g. And even though there's a hole there, there's no actual point for this function, it does actually look like x minus g everywhere. And we can find uh, what this g value is. Let's use x equal 2 and y equal 5, or f of x equals 5. And we have this 5 is equal to x minus g. Now with this, then we'll just move this, uh, move this up. We have x minus g is equal to 5. Let's solve for g then. Uh, remember, oh, we can put in x equals 2 here. So let's just say that 5 then is equal to 2 minus g. And so let's find the value for g. Let's add g to this side. So g plus 5 is equal to 2. And then now we say that g is equal to, let's just subtract 5, subtract 5. And we get g is equal to negative 3. Okay. So g is equal to negative 3, and that helps us how? Well, now we can actually say that f of x, uh, we're going to put it here. So f of x now, back to its original, is that x squared plus bx plus c turned into x minus 2, oops, x minus 2 times x minus g, right? And that g value is negative 3, so we have x minus a negative 3, so more brackets there, and then we x, x minus 2. Okay, so let's clean this up again. This is going to be f of x is equal to x minus 2 in brackets. And then we have x minus negative 3, which actually ends up being x plus 3. And we have all of this over x minus 2. This is still very familiar. Remember that because we have a point of discontinuity, we're going to have a term, a binomial term here that that cancels with something in the denominator. So uh, continue on here. Of course, we know that x cannot be 2. But now let's expand this numerator and see what we get. So we have x times x, which is x squared. x times pl plus 3 is plus 3x. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. And this negative 2 times positive 3 is going to be equal to negative 6. And that, of course, is over x minus 2. But if we simplify these terms and collect like terms, we're going to get x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 2. This follows our form of x squared plus bx plus c. And so we can see that the, literally, that the value for c is equal to this negative 6. Hopefully that helps, and I will see you in class.